Now, we've all been brought up to believe that just one quick application of WD-40 or a silicon spray can make all of your problems go away. But here is the thing. If you use WD-40 or silicon spray in the wrong application, it will temporarily solve your problem, but it'll make it come back in a bigger and better way than what it was originally. So that is why it is so important to use the right spray for the right problem. And it is not to say that these lubricating sprays or solvents are bad, it's more just that it's not a one size fits all type of tool. For the right job it is a great tool and for the wrong job it is a horrible tool. So let me explain. Four, three, two, one. And ignition and lift off of Aries 1X. Testing now, it was originally invented in 1953 as part of the extreme early days of the United States rocket program which evolved to become the US space program. They needed a way to protect the parts of a spacecraft from rust by basically stopping any water from being able to get to it. And since then it's been discovered to have so many other benefits which is why it's such a commonly popular product today. The original water displacement 40 chemical acts as a repellent to water but it also acts as a chemical version of a magnet for all the bits of grime and nasties that get caught up in your machinery. And there's a big misconception that I need to clear up about WD-40 and that is, is that it's not a lubricant, it is a solvent. And so, what does that mean in English? Well, a solvent is a chemical that either dilutes or disperses other substances. This chemical works by basically spreading itself so evenly and thinly all across whatever you spray it across and it becomes so thin and so even it actually gets under little bits of dirt and grime for where you don't want to get it and then actually pushes it up to the surface. And so then when you later either wipe it away or it drips away from say inside of a lock hinge or a mechanism or something like that, uh, the dust and grime will go away with it. And so you've got a bit of a win. Well, that is until you realize that small traces of the WD-40 compound are actually still in the mechanism that you sprayed it on. And now, this acts as a chemical magnet to basically hold on to everything that it gets exposed to. So, let's just talk about the inside of a hinge for example. In the old days, it would have attracted a certain percentage of the nasties that it was exposed to. Whereas now that there's traces of WD-40 on the hinge, it will now basically hold on to everything that it is exposed to. And so that is why in the short term it'll fix your hinge or your problem but then in the long term it'll make it far worse. It's kind of comparable to a good YouTube video attracting likes and subscribes. I hope you get the hint that I'm trying to drop there. And furthermore with WD-40 I have to point out that it is a petroleum based chemical and so that means that it will very very slowly eat away at plastics and rubbers whilst being basically harmless to metals. WD The insides of a lot of complicated machinery now actually do have small amounts of plastic and rubber inside of them. This will actually do long-term damage to the components of inside of the mechanisms that you're trying to lubricate. And so if you already have sprayed WD-40 into something that you should not have and now you're worried that you've condemned to the thing that you sprayed it onto being ruined, don't worry, there's actually a solution for this. Because WD-40 is a great cleaner, but you can just spray a lubricator on afterwards. And now that brings us to part two of this video, Silicon sprays. How is silicon spray different to water displacement chemicals? For solvent, as it diffuses and dissolves many of the particles it gets exposed to, silicon sprays basically just create a very thin layer of a protective film over whatever you're spraying it on. And with that, bits of it drip away and sometimes it collects little bits of a dirt and grime that you want cleaned out of something as well. But with that being said, WD-40 is a better cleaner of our mechanism whereas a silicon spray is a better protector from future damage for a mechanism that you're spraying it onto. And whereas the traces of a WD-40 that's left on the mechanism that you sprayed it on will then be a chemical magnet for future particles, the thin layers of silicon that are left behind will form a very thin film and actually protect the mechanism from future nasties that want to get into it. And that includes air and water which basically will prevent rusting. And how long does a silicon spray last? Well, under the right conditions it could be up to 15 years. But just bear in mind that if it's on a mechanism that's constantly grinding up against one another, it obviously will not be that long. And whereas I mentioned before that WD-40 is harmful to plastics and rubbers, is there anything that silicon spray is harmful to? Silicon spray?
Well, it's actually safe for most applications and that includes plastic, rubber and metal. And so with that in mind, it's actually easy to talk about where you shouldn't use silicon spray as opposed to talk about where you can use silicon spray because you can pretty much use it in everything. And so what is the one scenario that you really should not use silicon spray on? That is when you have the triple combination of metal, paint and silicon spray. Now applying silicon to a painted metal, say like a car, would mean that different parts of the paint would be exposed to the elements at a different exposure as there's a very thin layer of silicon over one part of the paint but not over the other and so then that'll cause it to age at a different rate and you'll see sort of uneven patches and furthermore to this if you spray silicon onto a metal before it is painted that will be an absolute disaster because as i mentioned before the silicon can last on a surface for up to 15 years and even if you try to prep a surface by sanding it all away and making it all smooth there'll still be traces of this silicon that are left behind. And so then when you apply the paint later on to the metal, little bits of it will be sitting on top of this silicon. And this causes a bit of a paint condition that's known as fish eyes, as you can see in this picture here. And so apart from the situation where you're worried about paint on a bit of metal, silicon spray is pretty much a better choice for the majority of applications that you'll need some kind of lubricating spray for. And that includes for things that have exposures to extreme environments as it provides a layer of protection and it is better for locks, hinges, pulleys, and even firearms. WD-40 and silicon spray can be used in combination where you use the WD-40 to initially clean out whatever you're trying to deal with, and then you use the silicon spray afterwards to protect it from future nasties. And now to another part about silicon spray, is it flammable? Well, in this can there's a gas called butane, and this gas is very much flammable. But as for after it is applied and all, all the butane has been sprayed away and it's just left with the silicon on the surface, it is not flammable at all. But with WD-40, just like the silicon spray, the butane that it uses as a propellant to spray onto the surface is flammable. And But unfortunately, the compound itself is combustible. Not quite the levels of flammable, but the good way to put this in the English is that it's probably equally as likely to catch a light as diesel fuel. So a simple rule of thumb if you're worried about this becoming a fire hazard is if you're not willing to put diesel fuel on a certain substance because it may get too hot or then don't put WD-40 on it either. And so right now I bet a small percentage of you are thinking but yeah, although you've covered the broad examples, you haven't really covered the thing that I'm specifically worried about, like can I use it on a brake pad or can I use it for some kind of electrical connection? And the answer for this isn't quite so simple, but don't worry, I do actually have an answer for this. And so the good news about all of this is that WD-40, it was originally just a product, but now it's expanded to become a brand. And this is very similar to CRC and Inox as well. Now all of these companies have some incredible chemistry magicians on their payroll. And now these brands have so many sub products that are designed for very specific and unique tasks. And so if for example, you need a rust cleared from an electrical, electrical connection, these three brands have specific products that do that exact purpose. Or if you want a lubricant that's better for metal and metal contact and silicon isn't quite doing the job because it's too heavy duty, well then there's a white lithium grease which is just great for that. If you don't need to clean an electrical, electrical connection but you're trying to protect it from future rust, Inox have a product called MX3 for that which actually protects it from future rust as well. And then even furthermore to this, they have things that like say silicon spray is suitable for all your lawn care equipment but they actually have special products that are very individually tailor-made for lawn care products with a tweak the formula a little bit with silicon just to make it ideal for certain purposes. To cut a really long story short, there's just too many sub-products to mention here that can do such a wide variety of jobs. And so now with all of that being mentioned, we get to the, the, the question of this video, when do I use a specialist spray? When do I use WD-40? And when do I use silicon spray? So first, when do I use a specialist spray? Well, for whatever task that you're about to embark on, just have a bit of a quick Google if there a specialist spray does exist for it. And so unfortunately, sometimes they do cost a little bit more than the original chemicals, but at least you then you have the confidence that this product is at least designed for what you want it to do. When do you use the original solution of WD-40? So the ideal time to use WD-40 is when something needs cleaning but not lubricating. And so it can be used on a hinge or on a lock to clean it out, 
But if you do this, make sure that you, you apply silicon spray after it, after all the WD-40 has dried off and dripped away. And if you're wanting to clean a bit of rust that isn't stuck inside of a very small or tiny mechanism that you can't get your hands inside of, you might actually be better off using other chemicals to clean rust. For example, if it's solely a metal component, you can just use vinegar. It's probably the cheapest way to remove rust. But if you need to clean something that has plastics and rubbers and paints attached to it, well then you can buy this other chemical that's made by CRC called Evapor Rust. And this isn't really acidic, it's pH neutral. And they've got some chemistry black magic going on where it purely attacks rust. And also if you are in the process of cleaning out rust or just general contaminants that you're using WD-40 to get on with, you can amplify the WD-40's effect by combining it by using a good quality microfiber cloth. And the reason being is that in the same way that WD-40 uses chemistry to attract nasties and particles towards the substance, microfiber cloths actually use static electricity and also the chemicals that it's made of to hold onto chemicals as well. And so you'd be amplifying the WD-40 effect if you use it in combination with a microfiber cloth as opposed to just a, any general old t-shirt or whatever. Think of it this way, that an old t-shirt is sort of similar to using a broom, whereas using a microfiber cloth is similar to using a vacuum cleaner, except on a very small particle level. And now, moving on to the last part, when do we use silicon spray? Well, if it involves metals, plastics, or rubber, silicon spray is the lubricant that you want to go with. Now, in regards to cleaning rust, it is not really that effective. But if you already have removed it, or you don't care about the rust that's already there and you just want to protect it from future rust, well then, yes, uh, silicon spray will be the tool that you need to use. And so I'm really hoping this answered all your questions about when do I use WD-40, when do I use silicon spray, and when do I use a specialist product. If I haven't, can you please leave me a question in the comments and I'll try to get to it. Thanks for sticking around and watching this cinematic masterpiece all the way to the end.